Is the terminal velocity of a chicken actually terminal? Terminal velocity is the constant speed an object moves at without accelerating. This occurs when the drag of an object is equivalent to its weight. So what would happen if a chicken was dropped out of a plane? If the terminal velocity of a chicken is not fatal, what injuries would the chicken sustain? My family and I have discussed this at length, theoretically, of course, all because of an idea I had to save chickens that are being wasted by the poultry industry. These questions arose after my family purchased a rooster we named Sir Romeo Cluckingston. He was a micro Sarama, one of the smallest breeds of chicken. Think softball size. Sarama roosters woo their hens with food and offer protection, hence the name Romeo. And through a grueling process of integrating him with our larger hens, he was accepted as the smallest member of the flock, and he seemed happy. But on April 16th of 2019, tragedy struck. It started out as a regular morning. My family picked up breakfast from Chick-fil-A without thinking much of it. But in the afternoon, Sir Clockingston was attacked by the two French bulldogs next door when he wandered into our neighbor's yard and the dogs decapitated my tiny rooster who tried to protect his hens. My neighbors broke the news and said something along the lines of, we hope he wasn't one of your favorites, then proceeded to wrap him up and throw him in their trash can. My dad fished him out and we buried him. It broke my heart. How could such a sweet chicken be literally treated like garbage? But it shouldn't have surprised me. The chicken my family purchased for breakfast that same day was likely given worse treatment her entire life. The untimely death of Romeo sparked my interest in how we handle our animal food sources and waste. To the benefit of the poultry industry, we unconsciously separate the animal from the food relatively easily. They make more profit without the backlash, effectively killing two birds with one stone. With such minimal contact between us and farm animals, it's difficult to see them as anything but the final product. But there's more to a chicken than just being food. Laura Monero, a neuroscientist and expert in animal behavior and intelligence, examined peer-reviewed data and concluded that, quote, chickens are just as cognitively emotionally and socially complex as many other birds and mammals in most areas. That's a big step up from the bird brains they're often viewed as. Chicken ownership has spiked during the pandemic with everyone looking for new ways to spend their time and gain a reliable food source. Chickens have become so popular that the CDC issued a warning to new owners advising them to avoid cuddling and kissing their chickens due to a salmonella outbreak attributed to backyard flocks. Chickens have captured the hearts of Americans across the country, and it's easy to see why. They're pretty adorable. That's my sister and me in 2019, preemptively breaking the CDC's advice with two roosters we had to give away. There are billions of chickens around the world. In fact, the United States had approximately 340 million egg-laying hens in December of 2019. In general, people want these chickens to have lived good lives. The National Institutes of Health conducted a survey in 2018 and found that 78% of respondents were somewhat or very concerned about the welfare of farmed animals, with 42% being very concerned. Organic and cage-free labels assure consumers that these chickens have lived good lives. But these labels are starting to mean less. The Trump administration withdrew a regulation in December of 2017 that required companies labeling their eggs as organic to provide one square foot of space per hen and access to the outdoors. This left larger corporations less regulated, hurt smaller egg producers, and left millions of chickens unprotected under a label placed to protect them. Because hens are extremely cheap and rapidly produced, older hens aren't lucrative enough to be a viable investment. After they reach one to two years old, they become a burden on the poultry industry. These hens can still lay eggs, just not as many as the, older, as the younger ones. So poultry companies kill them with carbon dioxide and dump them in landfills. To put that into perspective, the average lifespan of a backyard chicken ranges from five to eight years. The most common breed of commercially laying chicken is the white leghorn, which supplies us with the majority of our white eggs. They lay 200 eggs, 280 eggs annually, but the number of eggs a chicken can produce each year decreases. Let's assume a chicken, 
uh, a chicken corporation disposes of a white leghorn after just two years of laying. Had this bird been kept alive three years longer, uh, research from the University of, the, of Florida suggests that it would have laid approximately 504 eggs. So not only are we dumping 170 to 340 million egg-laying birds away per year, but we're dumping billions of eggs alongside them. My original idea was to repurpose these older hens and give them to people in need to provide them with a constant food source, eggs. I wanted to deliver chickens by plane to impoverished people, specifically those in Haiti, due to their limited resources and proximity to the US. Dr. Farin, the head of the Haiti Goat Project, warned me of the challenges she faced and that I would likely encounter when repurposing hens and relocating them to Haiti. Not only would the cost of transportation be alone be astronomical, but the impact on Haiti's economy could be devastating. Haiti is an underdeveloped country whose economy is focused on agriculture. By introducing free chickens into their market, Haitians could, Haitian farmers would lose business and Haitian citizens could suffer from a lack of a sustainable food source. This happened, in two, this happened a few years ago when Japan sold its surplus of rice to Haitians far cheaper than their local farmers could produce it. When the surplus is ended, Haitians suffered from a lack of a reliable food source. So I decided to take a more domestic approach. We pride ourselves in being the world's largest economy, yet when faced with an unexpected $400 bill, like a medical expense or rent, 27% of Americans would have to borrow or sell something, and 12% wouldn't be able to cover the bill. This forces people into tough situations, often deciding between food and other necessities. In 2018, one out of seven US households with children was food insecure. My idea started to hatch. I could help solve this food insecurity issue and unburden the poultry industry of their waste while giving chickens a more meaningful life. We're living in unprecedented times amidst the pandemic, and it's possible 54.3 million Americans could soon face food insecurity. With constant concerns about our current situation, the poultry industry flies under our radar. Currently, chickens are being euthanized more rapidly because poultry corporations lack the workforce to care for them. Millions of chickens are being wasted, and in these times, it's foolish for us to squander our resources. It's more important than ever that we use innovative ideas to turn an unused resource into a way to survive. Since these hens are essentially a waste to poultry corporations, they have more to lose by not donating them. Not only could their disposal costs go down, but they could actually benefit through tax breaks if they decided to donate. It could also serve as great PR, especially if they acted as a pillar of stability right now. Although pol most poultry corporations vaccinate their chickens, there are some unavoidable biohazards that come with a poultry uh, distribution program, avian influenza being one of the most infamous among them. Dr. Martin, the director of the veterinary division in the poultry programs in North Carolina's Department of Agriculture encouraged me to separate chickens that came from different sources and educate those receiving the chickens. If one group of chickens has a disease, it's important to minimize the spread as much as possible. Dr. Martin described this as the wet paint theory. It means limiting contamination between different sources of chicken, uh, preventing the spread of wet paint or chicken waste by keeping clothing and shoes clean. Using a source log is also crucial to meet biosecurity standards and legal requirements by being able to trace and contain the spread of disease. I'll also need to educate those receiving the chickens. By providing educational resources, people will learn how to take care of chickens, including how to ensure their welfare and prevent the spread of disease among their group. The bottom line is people will need adequate information to know what they're getting themselves into. Currently, I'm investigating obtaining egg-laying chickens and transporting them with trucks to needy people in North Carolina. I'm investigating organizing with a egg-laying corporation, and I'm in the process of starting a 501c organization. Despite all my research on chickens, I still don't know if a chicken dropped from a plane would survive. And that's okay. I may not be an expert in all things chicken-related, but I can still work to improve their lives, feed our state, 
reduce our waste, reform our agricultural industry, and make a difference, all in one foul swoop. If someone told me these chickens would have such an impact on me today, I'd look at them like they were crazy. Those adorable bird brains. It's time chickens took to the road and flocked together with those in need. Thank you.